Welcome back. I'm developer evangelist Kevin Hoyt. In this series, we've been talking about web standards. In this particular episode, I'm going to talk about CSS3 transitions. This is a, a really kind of fun area to get into. Not that most of the other specifications I've covered haven't been fun, um, but CSS is where all the visual magic happens. And so you can do some really fun stuff with it. Um, and uh, transitions is just going to be the tip of the iceberg. So let's take a look at it. Uh, the first thing we'll need to keep in mind is that on iOS, CSS transitions are actually hardware accelerated. That means they're gonna move real nice and smooth for you, um, like butter, uh, as it were, uh, across the screen or wherever you might be moving them to. They'll be hardware accelerated, and that'll make them move nice and smooth for you. Um, See, the idea behind CSS3 transitions is we're going to move something from here to here. How is it going to get from there to there? Um, and essentially, what property is there that we're watching? So for example, if I want to, in this case, we'll be moving a ball from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen uh, by manipulating the left property, the CSS left property of that ball. So it'll start here, say at 100, and it'll end here at over 300. How does it get from 100 to 300, and what property we're watching? In this case, we're watching the left property. And so when I modify the left property via JavaScript to the CSS on that element, it's going to go ahead and then apply the transition to get it from here to here for me. I don't have to think about running some sort of animation script or um, request timeout uh, to go ahead and, uh, or, or sorry, request animation frame or set a timeout or interval, what have you, uh, to go ahead and move that ball across the screen. Uh, the CSS transition will go ahead and do that for me. So you just tell the CSS3 transition what to watch, what property it needs to watch and then it will do the rest for you once you start moving then messing with that property from JavaScript or any other uh, uh, CSS hover, for example, or other types of interactions. You also need to tell the transition how long it's going to take, right? You can't assume that it's going to go from 100 to 300 in 10 seconds or one second, how long? So you also need to specify that. Um, and you can also even specify, um, there are some default easing properties. So rather than just be like, uh, in a nice, consistent kind of uh, movement, which is which is all fine, and there are times where you might want that. A more kind of natural looking uh, behavior would be for something to either start slowly and speed up, or maybe start really fast and then slow down as it gets to there. And those types of animations are really common in terms of user interface to make things look, behave more natural. They just feel more natural to our uh, to our minds and our perception. Um, so you have some easing default uh, properties there that you can use. You can also specify your own timing function. Um, that's some pretty interesting possibilities. At that point, you can do all kinds of interesting, you know, ooh, fast, and going back and slide. So you could really get kind of crazy with what you wanted to do in terms of the transition itself. Um, you can also specify how long to wait before starting that transition. So we might, on the mouse click, say, move the left property from 100 pixels to 300 pixels. The transition will pick that move up because we're telling it to watch the left property um, and it'll know how long it takes to get there and whether or not it should ease it or just be a linear or what have you. Um, but it might wanna, you might wanna say, you know what, do that, but do it after one second has elapsed. And that will allow you to, for example, run other transitions that need to happen before that specific transition happens. And so you can use the delay to start timing out the sequence of these particular transitions. Um, the last thing you might be interested in kind of capturing is when the object has reached its destination. And so that's actually through an event. Uh, and in this case, you look for the transition end. Now, CSS transitions tend to be a bit, um, still tend to be a bit uh, browser specific. So you'll have to do some additional coding to, man to manage that for your uh, target audience. Um, but there is an event, generally speaking, that uh, is transition end. So for example, it might be WebKit transition end or Moz transition end or just transition end uh, that lets you track when that transition is completed. And uh, that's something, for example, if something has moved from point A to point B and then we want to go ahead and remove it from the screen after it reaches point B, we can use that event to be notified of when that transition has finished uh, occurring. 
So let's take a look at some CSS transitions in action. I have here a, in my browser a game of jacks. Uh, the jacks that you see on the screen are just uh, randomly uh, thrown out onto the screen uh, when the page is loaded. And we have our little bouncy ball here. We're going to go ahead and click on the bouncy ball and it goes to the bottom of the screen and as it gets down there it shrinks because we're tossing the ball onto the ground which is further away from our eyes. It goes down to the ground as it gets down to the ground, it's further away, so therefore it is smaller for our perception. And then also when it hits the ground, it's going to compress. That, that uh, initial momentum is going to compress the rubbery substance uh, that is the ball. And so we're going to go ahead and squish it a little bit, and then it's going to come, uh, come back up and, and, and at us. Um, and we're essentially going to play that back. That's the uh, end product of what we'll be looking at as we work through this part of the series on transitions, transforms, and animations. Um, and uh, we're going to start just by being able to click on the ball and move it from point A to point B. So here's what we've got so far. Uh, a hardwood floor and a bouncy ball. Nothing going on with this bouncy ball, it just is there. We haven't uh, put any event listeners on it. Let's go ahead and do that by jumping into the code. So here's the HTML for this particular uh, transition that we're going to use. Here's the image that represents our ball. It's about 150, 149 by 150 pixels. Uh, that's our ball. And when the body of the page is loaded, we'll call do load. And at this point, I want to get a reference to the ball so that when I click on it, I can go ahead and modify its CSS properties. Before I write that, though, I want to kind of just step over and take a look at the CSS properties. So if we come over here to the CSS, uh, you can see that the background is that floor JPEG. Um, the ball here is uh, left 100, it's got a position absolute, and it's got a top 100. So it's over 100, down 100 in the grand scheme of the display space. We're going to uh, first write the JavaScript to move it from point A to point B. And then we'll come back into the CSS and add the transition um, uh, markup to be able to move it smoothly. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say var ball. I'm just going to initialize that to null here. We'll say ball equals document query selector. And in this case, we'll be looking for ball. The Dreamer does a great job of looking at our document and helping us out. Ball it is. Uh, and then we're going to say ball add event listener for click, and in this case, um, uh, we'll go ahead and say do ball click. I'll put that in another function. So then we'll say function do ball click. I'm not going to worry about the specific uh, mouse event that's coming along with that. We're going to get a reference to that ball again, so we'll go ahead and say ball, ball equals document query selector for the ball element, ball.style.left equals 300, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the pixels on the end, and so that will, when we click the ball, it'll go from wherever it is uh, to over to the 300 mark. And so let's just go ahead to our, our browser here. Take a look at that, refresh the page, uh, click on the ball, and poof, it moves over. I, I think we, we have a large enough screen, we should probably up that value a little bit more to get some kind of really interesting uh, display in here. So let's move it over, say, 1,000. Refresh it, click, 1,000, maybe, maybe a bit too far there. Let's just tune it in here. One last try, go ahead and click that ball. There we go, so it's within the confines of, of our screen, that's, that's fine. Now, you notice that the ball, when I click on it, just literally, we refresh it, clicks, it jumps over to where it's supposed to be. Now, we don't want that to happen. That wouldn't be very natural. Things don't just magically disappear and reappear someplace else when you touch them. Well, that'd be pretty cool. Um, in this case, we actually want it to physically move from point A to point B. So let's go to the CSS and add the transition hooks to make that happen. Now, the CSS transition uh, markup can be uh, compacted. So if you want to use a one-liner, you can certainly do that. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple different lines uh, just to kind of make it, to kind of call out and make it clear. So we're going to say transition. Now, in this case, if you just want to do the compact one liner, you would use the WebKit transition, Mozilla transition, the O transition, and then, of course, the, just the transition. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, transition property. And that's going to say, hey, what property are we watching? And in this case, I'm watching the left property. And then we're going to go ahead and say WebKit transition, and uh, we'll take a look at the transition timing. 
So the duration. And again, uh, Dreamweaver is very helpful in terms of getting into those WebKit properties and be able to tell us what's available. Um, we'll go ahead and say the transition for this uh, is going to be, let's say, 0 0.8. So uh, notation, generally speaking, is in seconds. Um, so if in this case, we wanted to be less than, a whole, less than a whole second from point A to point B, so we'd say 0 0.80 or 0 point whatever to be a fraction of a second, and then the S represents the second. And uh, that'll, that'll cover it. So now whenever the left property changes, it'll move that uh, from point A to point B over 0.8 seconds. Let's go ahead and go back to our browser, refresh, click on the ball, and voila, it moves across the screen. We'll do it again, click on the ball, it moves across the screen. Now, that's a nice, smooth, easy animation. We can go ahead and, uh, that's a linear, uh, we, we can change it. Uh, let's do web transition. Uh, timing function, and let's move that to maybe, uh, well, let's move that to an ease out, let's say. And uh, just for fun, let's go ahead and, as long as we're calling out the transition properties here, let's delay it by, say, one second. So now we'll refresh our browser, click on the ball, it'll wait a second, and then it'll go ahead and use the easing function to get it there um, in the desired fashion. There we go. So now we can basically tell our ball to get from point A to point B. At this point, that is a transition. And that works for any property you want to monitor. It can be a transition of the opacity. It might be a transition of the left, the top. It might be a transition of other properties. Um, and, uh, and transition will go ahead and just move all those around. Now, you can also, in this case, call out other properties to move. Um, so if I wanted to say move, watch the top and the left property, um, and uh, then in the, um, in the additional markup, you can specify over what duration for each property when it changes and how each one should change in terms of its timing function and so on and so forth. So you can really have a very long uh, drawn out um, set of properties to watch and change whenever the transition applies. In this case, we're just doing a simple transition from the ball being in point A to point B, but at this point, we've really set the foundation for getting that ball to react to us. Now, I don't want the ball just to go one way and then have to refresh my browser to do it again. I want it to go one way and come back. That's gonna be a CSS animation. And then, of course, once it's hit the floor, I want it to actually compress. That'll be a CSS transform. We'll take a look at animations in another video episode. Uh, until then, I'll be waiting.